look who's joined us, Mr. Frank Warren. How are you, sir? You good? I'm all right, mate. How are you? Very well indeed. You're looking well. And obviously, you've just heard uh, Dana speaking there uh, uh, on the world of boxing. We spoke to him actually recently uh, for your podcast, and you spent quite a lot of time talking to him about the pros and cons of boxing and the UFC. What do you make of his take on the current state of this week's science? Well, I think we're in a what, what statement. We're running shows under very difficult conditions, but we're running shows. We're doing no different than he's doing, both me and other promoters. Um, I don't know what's going on in the States, but I think the shows that we've delivered, and even our opposition, Matram, what they've delivered, I think have been good for the public. So I don't, you know, I can't, I can only say what we've been doing has been quite well received. We've had good ratings uh, for our shows, according to the the rating system I don't trust, but we had um, <laughs> we had good ratings according to them, and uh, you know, I'm pleased. And we got some fighters in great positions, and we got some really big fights coming up. You've been vocal, obviously, during the lockdown about promoters coming together, working together in order to to make the fights that the fans want to see. Is that maybe what Dan is getting at there? Because, uh, as you know, it's, it's a very different business model. UFC, he's one singer, one song. It's a lot more people to obviously negotiate with in the world of boxing, which kind of makes it a little bit more difficult to make the best fights all the time. Well, he's very lucky, Dana, because he does it his way, and that's the only way. You know, there are, he's not dealing with governing bodies. There aren't, there aren't options like you've got in boxing. You know, if you don't want to fight for one governing body, you can fight for another. If you don't want to fight for one promoter, you can fight for another promoter. So the fighters have options. Um, it's a totally different, they're different sports anyway. I mean, totally different sports, obviously and uh, different disciplines. But um, as far as, uh, you know, um, I don't know, I just think, you know, boxing has, boxing will has, and has always been the most popular contact sport. And it always will be. The biggest fight always captures the public imagination. It always does. And it even took for the biggest ever UFC fighters involvement to fight a boxer. And Conor McGregor actually fought a boxer and got beat by, um, as we all know, by um, Mayweather. So for me, boxing is, you know, I'll I'm, I'm, I'm make no secret, you know, boxing is a sport I love and been involved in from a very young age. So for me, it's the, it's the best sport. Of course, there's lots of problems going on in, in boxing, Box, but there's problems going in, in all businesses, all walks of life. That's called competition. Mm-hmm. The fact that um, you have competition is what in some ways makes it healthy because if it was a monopoly, then there may be a problem. And the ones who would suffer, or well, the two, two groups of people who suffer, are the fighters and the public. Has the pandemic actually made people like yourself in the world of promoting just take stock and, and kind of assess those problems even more and therefore maybe speed up the process of trying to bring people together to, in order to make those super fights that all the fans are after, as once obviously the pandemic's gone, that we can do that in 2021? Well, I, I, I like a lot of people, had a lot of time on my hands. So I was looking at fights, fantasy fights I'd like to make, you know, involving British fighters. And so I drew up a list, as you know, we put it out there, our mm-hmm. fighters, we, the other side's fighters. And uh, we, I, got, we, I reached out, made a call, we got a call back, and I think it was last week on TalkSport. Um, Eddie Hearn said he, we're going out for lunch at the end of the month, um, which is... I still don't know where that is or when that is, but anyway, that's what he said. And obviously, I'm not some old bird who's sitting here, you know, desperate for a, to meet a bloke, that's for sure. So, but, you know, if we can get together, we'll get together and do what we got to do. Um, and I want to make these fights, and there are a lot of fights. He made an offer to us the other week for another one of our fighters, and he just sent a message back quite simply, yep, very interested in that fight. Let's sit down and discuss it, as we've asked you to do. Because it's not just that fight, there's a few fights. Maybe he'll do some of them, we'll do some of them. We may do some together. Who knows how it'll work out? But the fact of the matter is there's some good fights to be made. But you know what? If they're not made, it ain't the end of the world because we still deliver like we've been delivering. And our shows, as you well know on BT, they've been the highest rated shows. So what more can you do? You can only do that. And they weren't going free to air. They were going to the subscribers. No, they have been good. And we've got some other crackers coming up as well. Obviously, Joe yeah. Taylor in action this weekend. We know Liam Williams is back over the next month. Uh, the big one that I want to talk to you about, though, is obviously Joyce uh, Dubois. What is the latest standing with that fight? Well, we've, we've, we've been told now that we're not going to be able to get any any uh, 
we can't go on the 24th. We've been told that by the O2. So we're looking at another date, but we're going to make a decision this week as to what we are actually going to do. Because we can't just keep, you know, postponing it and whatever people have bought tickets. They're sitting in the box office at the O2 or the various ticket agencies, and they need to know what's going on, as do the two guys. So we're looking at it at the moment. I feel that the fight will go on before the end of the year. Excellent stuff. Does that, is it totally regarding whether you can get people into the O2 or not? Will it happen regardless behind closed doors? That's going to be a big call and a big decision that everybody's going to have to make. You know, that means the boxers, ourselves, sitting around a table and working that one out because obviously without a gate, the uh, revenue is dramatically different. Yeah. On the big man, on Tyson um, and the Wilder trilogy. We've heard Bob over in the States talking about the possibility of that still going ahead in December because they're looking at the Allegiant Stadium, uh, the big new NFL stadium in Las Vegas. What's the latest with that, Frank? Um, well, at the moment, there's no date set or anything set. Nothing's, nothing's set, actually set, as they say, in stone. At the moment, we're all working towards trying to get the fight, and there's been an interest from another territory, and there are discussions going on, and hopefully we'll have some news soon because uh, December the 19th in boxing uh, parlance is looming, so we need to get the guys out in training and, and obviously get the thing set up. You just mentioned a moment or two ago about the uh, maybe a possibility of another territory for the... Uh... Fury Wilder fight. Any clues? It's somewhere in the world. <laughs> Will I need my sun cream? Depends what time of year you go. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, ex excellent stuff. Frank, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. And you, mate. See you soon. <laughs> Bye, Adam. <laughs>